Welcome back to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Network. We're talking about IT modernization. We were just getting into some specific programs. And Katie, I'd like you to highlight uh, an area that uh, you'd like to highlight for the, uh, for the listening audience in regards to a specific program that BMC is involved in. Yeah, absolutely. I have been really excited to be involved in this particular program for the last several years. We're supporting a DOD agency with over 300,000 active duty and 275,000 civilians. They had a, an issue where they had over 100 service desks throughout the organization that were trying to support various groups of warfighters, various groups of, of people back, um, back stateside. And they were struggling because there was just so much disparate information that it was making them hard, making it hard for them to deliver services in a timely manner and deliver services in a way that actually made sense for the mission. So what they did is worked with some systems integrators who leveraged the BMC Helix platform to pull those service desks together in an IL-4 environment mm -hmm. and actually deliver out, a, a, instead of a service desk, or to George's point about digital business transformation, instead of IT, they now have an enterprise service management platform that's modernized and is going to help them succeed in the future as they look beyond just IT. They look at how can we bring in some of the things from facilities? How can we look to the edge, which you mentioned before, Luke, and pull that information in? And they've got that platform now, and it's been a really exciting project for us to be involved in. Really a uh, key aspect of, of, of installing this type of capability way beyond just instrumentation and allowing them, again, to build on top of that, to create this superpower of an ecosystem to, uh, to uh, deliver the goods, so to speak, and, and allow them to enable their mission, which I, I think is fantastic. Glad to hear that. Uh, Jim, how about over at TSA? There's a lot of cool stuff going on over there right now. And uh, um, I've heard about uh, touchless entry and all kinds of different crazy things going on. Give us an example uh, of a program you'd like to highlight, uh, some activity that's going on over there at GSA. I would really like to highlight the human capital modernization that has um, recently rolled out. This is really given an opportunity and then aligned to the federal data strategy to look at the person the identity of a person mm. and be able to follow this from an applicant to a candidate, to an employee, to a retiree. So it's really looking at the life cycle management of that data and then working to improve the user experience, working to share that data. We are using that as a building block now to look at airport operations. It's, it's just often much more difficult to upgrade and modernize those operational activities. Um, so we're able to do that. We are able to also leverage good practices where we have hub spoke management. So at TSA, the authority really is with the federal security directors. So that's kind of lower level than just headquarters. But we need to be able to support that as they carry out the mission. Um, we are able to do that through a lot of self-service management, self-service data access, and uh, really application access that we don't handle necessarily at headquarters, but we push out to those 85 or so federal security directors. Uh, so those are the directors that are out in the field sort of running that airport operation, I would imagine. Yes, that includes, for example, Arizona, the entire state. Right. And, and one wouldn't think, you think oh, HR, right? And, and, and uh, modernizing HR, uh, obviously important, but is it key? Absolutely, it's key. You all are hiring in thousands and thousands of these, uh, these uh, inspectors, along with all these other people, um, um, uh, monthly, I would imagine, or, or certainly yearly. And uh, uh, certainly all of us that are the traveling public want to make sure that's going as efficiently as possible. So I'm glad to see that you're modernizing that activity. Uh, Lamont, let's talk about at Verizon, uh, a lot of activity going on over there. Give us an example of a program that you'd like to highlight uh, where you're right smack in the middle of one of these IT modernization activities or digital modernization, I think, as George pointed out. 
Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Luke. And yeah, and definitely want to hit on too with the business processes that George was talking about. I mean, we're looking at in the defense space with the DOD, with a couple of the, uh, the combatant commands on how we modernize their networks and the enterprise IT as a service. And what's key about that is we're looking at it from the end user standpoint and how do we start delivering services to the end user in a better way? So it's more than just looking at how do we just do a tech refresh or tech upgrades, but how do we then start in tandem, upgrading the upgrading the network services, providing connectivity between the all the compute infrastructure, other applications. How do we make sure that the network is available for them to be able to to go out and get to with any of these applications from anywhere on a base or, or coming outside of a base, um, so that they can make sure that they're continue to move that mission forward. So it's really looking at how do we unify all the technologies together, um, network compute. Um, compute applications, make sure it's a seamless environment for those end users to be able to, to work and move their mission forward. Um, our main thing that we wanna make sure is that we're working together with the Department of Defense to advance that mission, advance what they wanna do, and then also assist with making sure that they're not just looking at this again, like a, as a tech up for upgrade, but then they're looking at this from, how do I now provide more services? How do I you know continue to innovate? How do I continue looking at what each one of my end users need for, so that they can continue moving forward with what they have on a day-to-day -day basis and not have to worry about what's happening on the back end for the network. Right. And I think Katie pointed out sort of gone are the days of sort of this tech upgrade. It's like, hey, I just need this a capability and I need it on demand, right? I need it when I need it. And uh, I need it to be secure, reliable, affordable. Uh, and I need it uh, quickly, right? Uh, we, we, we can't go through these lengthy uh, upgrade cycles, uh, which are uh, sort of something uh, I would say from the past, uh, let's hope. Uh, Robert, let's talk about priorities. I'd like you to give your, you talked about a lot of things that you're working on over there at NASA. Let's talk about the, just sort of the, the top three, right? I'm sure you got 30. Uh, when you look at this year, what you're trying to do from now to the end of the year, you know, a few months out from that, what are the top three priorities in your job jar there? A top three. So the biggest one is we are um, realigning all the NASA OCIO um, assets, everybody who does work within the OCIO shop across the 10 centers under a new concept of service line. So enterprise services, trying to improve the customer experiences, be more effective and efficient with our dollars or limited dollars and things like that. So that is huge. That's gonna affect every uh, OCIO employee at NASA. Um, next would be um, modernization. I've mentioned our, our cloud modernization efforts. And then third, and I heard somebody mention this too, digital transformation, uh, supporting the agency in digital transformation. We are looking to provide platforms to allow our rocket scientists and other scientists who are you know, truly really smart people, the platforms to use uh, AI, uh, AI and ML and other types of advanced um, uh, tools to conduct their research and to analyze data and things like that. So those to me are, are really three of our top um, priorities that we're dealing with at Goddard. Big one, certainly a massive one and really setting the table to allow all these other things to uh, to be enabled, which sounds fantastic. Yeah. Stephen, how about at Snowflake? Uh, no doubt uh, you all are uh, got a lot of activity going on internally within Snow Snowflake, and I'm sure you're getting a lot of demand signals in regards to, uh, to activity that's going on uh, from the customers. Uh, what's the top couple of priorities for you there? Yeah, I think <clears throat> the first is, is, as I kind of mentioned earlier, about kind of a data platform approach, right? Being able to handle, you mentioned before, the different, you know, types of data, right? There's um, some statistic that most of the world's data has been created in the last two years, right? And so you've got huge variety, you know, not just the typical, you know, legacy type, but, you know, semi-structured data and a lot of unstructured data. I talk about, you know, especially, you know, images and text and video and all this stuff coming in. Um, so having a single point of entry to be able to access and manage that data, right? Single security model um, has, has been a big thing that we've talked about not having a lot of moving parts. Um, I would say the other thing too is, is looking at when I'm talking to customers about data and their data operations, it's really thinking about it in terms of business processes, organizational processes that are driving, uh, creating that data, right? Data is data by itself without context has no meaning. 
Um, and so as you look across your organization, it's one of the interesting things you, you'll find is that data can have different meaning in different parts of your organization, right? And so being able to take, instead of looking at it from a systems view, which has been kind of the traditional approach and looking at it from an enterprise view, being able to not just correlate, but create um, relationships, build ontologies and things like that within your data, within your organization. It's been a um, really interesting thing that I've been watching and, and working with customers on as well. Um, but I would say going back to the ridge, really being able to manage a wide variety of data coming in at different velocities, varieties um, in a single platform. That's, that's really been something that customers don't want to manage 10 different pieces of technology, right? They don't want to have to stitch all that together to make it work. Um, and so having that single point of entry, single model, single platform for all your different types of data to be able to serve that up to your communities of interest, whether they be rocket scientists or geneticists or logisticians, um, it's been a huge uh, part of what we've been doing at Snowflake to serve our customers. Interesting catch when you talk about a wide variety of data, right? You know, sort of stuck in those silos being pulled out, but a wide uh, variety of types of data, imagery, uh, you know, audio, et cetera, et cetera, which is, uh, is very interesting and trying to stitch all that together and make it meaningful. No doubt that's a uh, top priority. George, how about at DLA? Um, give us uh, your top three priorities. Once again, I'm sure no question you've got a long list. Give us the top three that you all are really focusing on over the next uh, six to, to nine to 12 months. On the uh, immediate future, next six months, our ERP to the uh, cloud migration, that's a, a big lift for us moving those uh, big systems uh, to the cloud. And that's a, a can't fail type mission. The uh, probably another thing is to continue. ER, this, if I may, ERPs being, for uh, example, enterprise what? resource planning. It's our transactional uh, systems. Okay. Uh, it's really the systems that we use to conduct most of our business, you know, place orders, uh, you know, uh, collect data, uh, uh, just the, you, the, the major systems that run the business, I guess, is uh, maybe the best way to put it. So. Okay, fantastic. Uh, the second thing is our uh, RPA or robotic process automation uh, mm -hmm. program. You know, we've had that going for about two years now. We've uh, developed well over 120 bots, most of which are unattended or, you know, fully automated, needing no human uh, or human credentials. But one of the things that we started testing last year and we're ready to roll out and scale this year is uh, uh, creating uh, citizen developers where, you know, the uh, RPA uh, or bot development uh, software is so uh, simple to use today that uh, we could now put the development of those bots uh, into the hands of the functional community. And our office now doesn't act as a throttle or a bottleneck on deploying it. So now it allows, uh, allows you to scale much more quickly, uh, saving, you know, increasing the number of labor hours your bots contribute to the workforce and saving the you know, human wetware, the human cognitive tasks uh, for something that are much higher order than the road things that we do with their bots. Uh, the other thing uh, that uh, is kind of below the, uh, below the waterline, but important to our users, is to continue to try to improve latency uh, or reduce the latency on their network. Uh, uh, we're finding a lot of, a lot of times, uh, at least in DoD, hopping in and out of the uh, network, going through cloud access, internet access points, and sometimes fairly circuitous routes to get from one point to the next. If we just start doing better path planning and uh, relook at the way our data is flowing, we could uh, shave some milliseconds off and really improve the user experience there. And I think finally, just to uh, reemphasize what Stephen was talking about, I, I think our big priority is that we are reorganizing uh, the whole uh, DLA around data because that is the future of the uh, organization for analytics and data is certainly the feedstock for AI and ML for predictive decision-making. So uh, as part of that uh, data uh, reorganization, we are uh, embarking on data literacy programs to try to do what we did in the bot program and create citizen uh, developers. We're trying to create some sort of citizen data scientist. Uh, so they could start, uh, folks out in the functional community areas can start taking control of their own data destiny by, you know, d do it yourself. So. I love the fact that you're giving the warfighters the, the, the power and the capability to develop their own RPAs on the ground and, and uh, heavy lift on that ERP. That sounds like the core system that essentially run DLA globally, which is fascinating. Well, you talked a little bit about uh, 
uh, response time and um, latency and hairpins and all these other things. Uh, so let's go over to Lamont at Verizon and give us uh, an update on the uh, top two or three priorities that, uh, that Verizon is really focusing on at this point. Yeah, thanks. We're uh, definitely looking at trying to make sure we, we help all of our partners with improving latency, improving how the network runs and is efficient. Sure. And, and as you guys are much more aware, we're very much pushing on how do we bring the connectivity either through a wireless or a wireline network. Um, we have a lot of emphasis and push on making sure that with 5G and making sure that that effort is um, moving forward, whether it's bringing fixed wireless access so that we can have the connectivity from any of the different locations so we can move and help facilitate the movement of this data at low latency, or it's, you know, also connectivity for any of these systems and sensors and, and other capabilities that are out on in places like at airports or at um, bases for uh, movement of, of uh, logistics and, and uh, machines and material going, making sure that there's a way for all the, the capabilities and technology and the data to move back and forth. So network um, is definitely key in making sure we have the connectivity piece there. And then security on top of it too as well is um, very important mission for us. Making sure that you know there's a zero trust um, uh, environment built so that you know when you know what users are coming in, where the data is going, how how you're uh, encrypting and managing that data um, across the network, um, and ensuring that you know there, there's zero leakage or, or or zero loss of any of our intellectual property that we have as a nation. Uh, zero trust out of the box, very important, and we really do appreciate you making sure all that. Uh, that, uh, that infrastructure is there and available uh, so that folks like Jim over at TSA can, uh, can do what he needs to do and what TSA needs to do. Why don't you give us your top three priorities, Jim? I know there's a lot of activity going on over there right now. There, there is a lot of activity going on at TSA and TSA has a very uh, structured and organized way of thoughtfully looking through all of the uh, various offices and efforts. Uh, we refer to that as, so that's called the administrator's intent. The administrator's mm. intent helps us prioritize at TSA. And there's one that we have for improving the business intelligence initiatives. This as well uh, to provide that access to the data, create a way to share data across the organization. We also want to support the federal data strategy to identify authoritative and trusted data sources, create those data stewards, really begin to um, operationalize the data across, the, across TSA. Uh, one way that we're doing that, uh, I can talk a little bit later, is through the use of a common lookup service. It's an information service that we've created to pull data out of the applications and then share it across applications. So we want to get more adoption with that common lookup service. And then finally, we want to finish the migration of the iShare to the cloud. Very much a focus on the cloud. And uh, it's interesting that uh, administrator's intent, it seems like, uh, you know, sort of this North Star, if you will, uh, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, Katie, how about at uh, BMC? Uh, can you give us uh, your top couple of priorities that you all are focusing on right now? Yeah, well, if, we, if, if you listen to um, what folks have been saying throughout the program, our customers are coming to us wanting to move to SaaS, wanting to move to the cloud. And that's a huge priority for us, a huge focus for us to provide these secure environments that our customers in the federal space need. That's been top of mind for us for many years. We did FISMA back in the day, FedRAMP, and now we're into the impact levels. So that's a, that's a priority for us because it's a priority for our government customers. We also are looking at automation. So this goes back to what George said, his top two things were move to cloud and automation. We see that and we're in, in leveraging all sorts of artificial intelligence capabilities to help drive that automation because that automation will help make the missions easier and make the missions more successful for our federal customers. And the last key area, just from a top priorities perspective, is going back to Stephen talking about all of the data and how much there is out there. We recognize that our customers need a way in order for them to be able to understand and validate. And that citizen data scientist that, that George talked about before, we've got to be able to pull information from multiple sources into a single place where it can help provide 
visibility into what services it's actually supporting. And so that's a key priority for us. We call it dynamic service modeling, just ingesting information from all different places to show how a service that supports the mission is running and help us automate if things go wrong. Really is fascinating as we talk about IT modernization on this show. And we used to talk about, uh, I always called it players and wires and plumbing. Uh, where, you know, the majority of this conversation is about the data. So really moving up that, uh, up that value chain, which I think is great. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Network. <laughs> 